guys. We are moving on to chapter number 3 that is decision control statements or decision control instructions. These instructions they control the flow of execution of your program. Now there are five types of decision control instructions. They are if, switch, for, by and do by. We will be talking about all the five type of instructions or statements one by one. But right now, let's have a look at if statement. An if statement can be again divided into five types of statements. One is simple if, one is nested if, one is compound if, and then a simple if ends ladder. And you know, all these if statements, the type of if statements, they are actually part of binary decision. Now, let me explain you that how it works. When I talk about a simple if statement, it is normally used with the keyword if. If this has to be in small letters, and then I have to write some kind of Boolean expression or a condition there. You know, if I have to find larger of two numbers, then this is a decision to be made by me that larger of two numbers can be found. If A and B are two variables, and if A is greater than B, then I want to say that okay, let's take a variable LGT and I say LGT is equal to A. See, this kind of if statement is a simple if statement. In this, you are making a decision. Now see, this decision normally consists of two operands and also a logical operator or a relational operator in between them. You see, the relational operators can be greater, less, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, double, equal to and not equal. We talked about this in the previous chapters also. Now here, when I say if A greater than B, LGT is equal to A, there can be another part to this, that is else part. Here I say else LGT is equal to B. See, I am already assuming that A and B are not equal. So one of them is greater and one of them is small. So when I say if A greater than B, see if this condition, this is now a binary decision. Binary decision by means two. So this decision has either two results. Either it will be true or it will be false. Now suppose the user gives input of A as 5 and B as 6. So if I say, is 5 greater than 6, the answer is going to be false. But when I say A is 15 and B is 6, is 15 greater than 6? Yes, the answer is going to be true. So if my answer is true, the result will be LGT is equal to A because as, as soon as the result becomes true, the control of execution jumps to this statement, LGT is equal to A. And this statement will not be executed. Because this condition true means that you are going to follow this part. This part is also called as then part or a true part. But we don't write then keyword here. We simply write if A greater than B, LGT is equal to A. Semi. Now another option can be when A is 5 and B is 6. Now see in this case, let's write the program again. Program was if A greater than B, LGT is A, else LGT is equal to B. Now if the input is A is 5 and B is 6, now if you see the condition is 5 greater than 6, of course the answer has to be false. It is not true, the answer is false. So if the answer is false, the control of execution will not go to LGT is equal to A because this is a true part. It will, it will go to else part because else part is also called as false part. Right? So this means this statement now will not be executed and if 5 is greater than 6 that means this condition is false then LGT is B. So the result will be that your LGT will come out to be 6. So guys it depends on that whatever is the value of input, the computer is going to make decision for you. So the complete programming segment will be something like this. See this? It's a complete programming segment which you are going to write in your program. I'm rubbing the extra parts. And now see, this is a if-else statement. So whenever you have to make any decision in the computer, you can use this kind of statement. You can have a look more closer look again, if A greater than B, LGT is A, else LGT is equal to B. Right? Now one more thing, what if I erase this 
n spot. If I erase n spot, computer is not going to give me any syntax error because this n spot was optional. You know? This was an optional part. That means even if I do not write any else and I simply say if a greater than d LGT is a, this is also going to work. Yes, of course, we know that it is not logically correct because this then this particular segment will only work for a greater than b. It will not work for a less than b or b greater than a because I have not written any else part here. But anyway, there is no syntax error. And simply, if the user gives a as 12 or b a 6, LGT will come out to be a. Otherwise, there will not be any largest found in this program. Nothing will happen. Because if I say a is 2 and b is 6, then this is not true. So this will not be executed. So what will happen? Nothing will come out in LGT. There is no result there. So but we cannot say that this is not correct. It is still correct, but it is incomplete. Now we come to nested if statement. Let's have a look at the code again. See now, I want to find largest of three numbers. A, B and C. So instead of two numbers, I have got three numbers. A, B and C. And let us assume that user has already input these two numbers. So I already have the values for A, B and C with me. So now let us see that how do I find the largest using nested if. See, nested if will mean that I am enclosing one if inside the other if. That means one if statement is starting and then immediately the second if statement is starting. So let us see how much is working. See, if I have to find largest of three numbers and if I want A to be largest, then definitely A should be greater than B as well A should be greater than C. So what I am left with is I have to find out the two conditions and these two conditions, if they are yes or they are true, only then to largest is A. So I have written down like this, if condition is condition 1, A greater than B, yes, then move to condition if A greater than C, yes, then move to this statement LGT is equal to A. That means the largest variable LGT in which I want to store the result, A will be assigned to this variable LGT. So that means now I have got the largest as A. Right? So A will become largest only when both these conditions are true. Now what happens when I write one more, one else statement? Now see, this else statement is actually matching with the innermost if. This is the syntax of C programming language. Whenever you write the first else, it has to match with the innermost if. So when I say else for this particular if, I mean to say that this particular condition has become false. So if this condition has become false, this means this else will mean this else will mean that C is written in here. Right? So now you see the conditions again. That means first condition is still true, A greater than B, and second condition is now C greater than B. So if you join both the conditions that C is greater than A and A is greater than B, what result do you get? A is greater than B and C is greater than A. So B is the smallest, A is the second largest, and C is the largest. So that is why the result is. LGT is equal to C. So I have got the complete result LGT is A and LGT is C in case of this inner if statement. Now let's move on to the next else. Next else is matching with the outer if. So what we are going to do is now we are going to discard this if completely and we are going to move towards first if or the outer if. So when you say this else, this else means that B is greater than A. Right? Because this is the else of this. So when I say B is greater than A, to make B as largest, I must have another condition also with me that B should be greater than C. So what I am going to do is, after this else, I am going to write is B greater than C. If B is greater than C, and already you have the result B is greater than A, so when you combine both the conditions, see carefully what comes to be. B comes to the largest because B is greater than A as well as C. Right? So you got the result LGT is equal to A. Now one more else. This else is the innermost. That means again this else is matching with the immediate if what you want. So when I say 
this ends, actually this ends means ends of this if, right? And ends of this if means that C is greater than B, right? So when I say this L, this means no part of this. So when I say no part, B is not greater than C, so definitely C is greater than B, right? And what is the first condition that already I am working with? My first condition is the else part of this, right? And else part, as I told you earlier also, else part is of A greater than B is B greater than B, right? So when you see, combine these two conditions, see carefully, B is greater than A, C is greater than B. So in this case, this B becomes second largest, A becomes smallest, and again C becomes the largest. So once again, LGT is equal to C, right? Because you can see from these two statements, the largest number is C. So in this program, C is coming twice as the result, and A and B are coming once. So this is how we are going to talk or we are going to write nested if statement. You can use this nested if statement whenever you have multiple conditions to be checked with proper else placed. Next, we are moving on to compound if. When we talk about compound if statement, it is very important for us to first know about the three logical operators. They are and, or, and not. Because without them, we cannot write any compound if statement. Again, a compound if statement means that in one particular statement, you have two or more than two conditions to be checked, just like nested if. But how it is going to be different from nested if? Let's see that. But before that, let's see the three operators that we are going to use in this compound if. See, same program. When I say the largest of three numbers, as we wrote earlier, that was using nested if. Now I'm going to use add statement or add operator in fact to write an if statement. What is an add operator? Add operator is always denoted by double ampersand sign and basically this operator is called logical operator. It is not an arithmetic operator because it is not involved in any calculation. It is actually involved in any decision process. Right? So when I say that I want to find largest of two numbers, three numbers A, B and C then what kind of condition do I need to follow? First thing is A should be greater than B and second thing is A should be greater than C, right? And since both conditions should be true, so I put the AND in between because an AND operator means that true AND true will give me the result true. We will also talk about more conditions AND or are not and more examples in the later chapters. But let us see that what is the result of this. If A greater than B and A greater than C, that means if both conditions stand true, then the largest is A. So let us assume that somebody gave the value of A as 3 and the value of B as 2 and the value of C as 1. So in that case, it will, the compiler is going to convert it into the object language and processor is going to check is 3 greater than 2. Yes, it is true. And is 3 greater than 1? Yes, it is true. So true and true will give me the answer for true. But if any one of the condition becomes false, then this LGT is equal to A statement will not be executed. This is the beauty of AND statement. Because in an AND statement, let us assume that the value of C was 4. So if the value of C was 4, and now you are asking the compiler to check that what is the result of this. So compiler is going to give the instruction to the processor. And processor is going to check is 3 greater than 2 and 3 greater than 4. Then see, first condition is giving me yielding me the result true, but the second is yielding me the result false. So in that case, true and false, my answer is false. So if this condition becomes false, definitely this part will not be. So that means NGT will not become equal to B, right? So if you have any else part, then you can write the else part. Otherwise, you can start with the next if statement also. We are going to write this complete program in the next time. Now, see the next operator, which is OR. What is OR? In case of OR, what we do is write again both the conditions. But what does OR mean? OR means if any one of the two conditions, OR, both the conditions are true, then the result is going to be 
function. How is it possible? Let us see that this operator is also denoted by the vertical 5 sign and you will find it on the uh, your keyboard also. Search for this sign, you will get this sign. It's called a pipe sign. Right? Now see this. What I am trying to do in this particular segment of program is that I am giving one kind of one piece of logic that is that let's say that there are some candidates who are going to apply for a particular post. And what the eligibility criteria is that the qualification either has to be postgraduate, let's say P stands for postgraduate, or the experience has to be minimum of three years. This I mean to say that if both conditions are valid, it's very good. But even if one of them is valid, still the candidate is eligible. But if both are invalid, then this statement will not be executed. That means he is ineligible. So how do I write it? I say if experience greater or equal to three, or qual qual means qualification. This is a very good name. Or qual double equal to. It's a conditional equality. Qual double equal to P. P stands for postgraduate. So if this or this, and put this in the big parenthesis. If this happens, print F print. And you can also write else print F print. Because else will be followed when both the conditions are false. So this is in contrary to the AND statement. In AND statement or in AND operator, both conditions have to be true if you want this statement to be followed. If any one of them becomes false, then the statement will not be executed. Right? So now move on to the third operator, NOT. This is denoted by exclamation mark. You can see this is an exclamation mark. Actually, NOT means the reverse of any condition or the complement. So, let's say I have a logic in which somebody says, okay, you tell I am going to input the age and the computer is going to tell me whether the person is eligible to vote or not. So, as you know that the age should be greater or equal to 18, right? So, my logic can be if age greater or equal to 18, print F eligible, right? But if somebody says I want to reverse this condition and write it using not operator, then what I am going to do is I am going to Make the opposite condition of age greater than 18, I would say age less than 18, but I would also apply an OR operator, right? Sorry, a NOT operator. So it will be if NOT of age less than 18. So this is the age less than 18 is already false. That means that false or false will become true. So that means this particular condition is exactly the same as this condition. If age greater or equal to 18 can be also written as if not of age less than 18. That means if this statement, suppose somebody's age is 32 years, right? So either you check like this that 32 is greater or equal to 18, yes, eligible. Or you check like this if not of, you see, if not of 32 less than 18. So see clearly, 32 less than 18, of course this condition is false. So I say not of false. So when I say not of false, this becomes true. Because not of false means that you are taking the opposite of false, which will become true. So this condition will become true for age 32. So you are writing already that if age not of age less than 18, print F eligible. So again here also it will come print F eligible. So this is how these three logical operators are going to work. Now let us write the complete program find largest of three numbers using this compound operator. So, using the compound and operator, now let us have a look at the complete program that I am going to write to find largest of three numbers. See this, I am using and operator. I am saying if A greater than B, one condition and A greater than C, second condition. Again, put them in one big parenthesis. If A greater than B and A greater than C, that means if both are true, then LGT is equal to A. Similarly, for B, if B greater than A and B greater than C, LGT is B. Third, if C greater than A and C greater than B, then LGT is C. And after that, once we are complete with these three if statements, then I am saying print F largest number is LGT. But you might ask me that why am I not using else here? Is it important to use else? This you can question yourself. 
See, else we use only when I want that this particular condition, whatever be the false part of this condition, I want to use that false part in the next way. I don't think any use of else is here because anyway, the second condition is self-sufficient. Self-second, self-sufficient means that B is written A and B written C itself gives the result as it is D. That means you don't need the else part of this statement to find out the largest number given. So, even if I skip this else, it is going to work fine for me. In the same way here also, even if I don't write else, this if is also going to work fine for me. All these three ifs are completely independent of each other. So, this is again the beauty of and, that is I am using and, I don't need any dependency on other if statements. Right? Now, the last in the if else statement is the if else level. Let's have a look at the program and uh, by taking the example of this program, I'm going to explain to you what is an if-else ladder. See now, there are multiple if-else in this. If, else, if, else, if and else. Whenever you find this series of if-else, 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 it is called a ladder. It's a multiple if-else. You know? So how? See this carefully. What I'm doing is that I'm assigning a variable grade of the type character. And there is another variable percentage PD card which is of the type float and uh, instead of inputting the value, I have already given it the value equal to 75.4. As you know, floating point numbers can be decimal also. So what the question is, the question given is that according to the percentage that is required by a student, you have to find what is the grade, what is his grade. So for me, the conditions are that if percentage is above 90, I want to give grade A. If percentage is less than 90 or greater or equal to 80, I want grade B. If percentage is less than 80 but greater or equal to 60, it should be grade C. Otherwise, less than 60, the grade is D. This program is self-explanatory. See what is happening. I am starting with if statement and I am saying if PER greater or equal to 90. This is a single one condition I am talking about. If percentage greater to 90, then the grade is equal to A. A I have written in single quotes because this grade is a character. So whatever is a character, you want to assign this value A to grade, you should put it within single quotes. Next, I say else. Now when I say else, this else and this next condition of else is very much dependent on the first no condition because you are saying else means that percentage is less than 90. Let me write it in with the remarks. Double slash means I am going to write single line remarks. This else means that percentage is less than 90. This is what I want to stress on. Because this else is very important for the next if. Right? So if you say else, then this means percentage is already less than 90. I just have to check one more thing. That is to find the range that if it is less than 90, it should be greater or equal to 80. So that my range is between 80 to 90 in this case. So when it is between 80 to 90, what you are saying is that your grade is B. Of course, this 90 is exclusive. This 90 is exclusive, right? Then when I say grade is B, this grade is B is coming for this range. In fact, it is 80 to 89 if you want to be more precise, right? For this particular range, the grade is B. Next, you see again one more else. Can you see the indentation I am following? What I am doing is, whenever I am writing if statement and see grade is A, I am pressing one tab key. When I am writing else, this else is in alignment with the first if. Now again when I start if, then again I am pressing one more tab key. And then when I say grade, two tab keys. So that, you know, it is very clearly readable program, clarity is there. And the person who is looking at your source code must know that this grade is A for this if, B is for this if, C is for this if, and D is for this if. So when I say now, percentage greater or equal to 80, grade is B, fine. But now this might have one more else. That else means that percentage is less than 80. So let me again write it within remarks that percentage is less than 80 in this case. So again, my range is that if percentage less than 80 but greater or equal to 60. So here, this is my range. It is between 60 to 79. Less than 80 but greater or equal to 60. Then the grade is C. Right? So this is for grade C. The range is this. 
of percentage else. Now I am not writing another if because I am left with just one condition to be checked that is is percentage less than 60 because if you say else of this this is actually else of this this is else of this. So when I say else of this last if this means percentage is less than 60 and grade becomes equal to B. I don't need to write any further if condition here. So the last else is always without if. So this is how I am going to check various percentage conditions and the ranges. So my first range is just greater or equal to 90, second is 80 to 89, third is 60 to 79 and the fourth was less than 60. So this is how you are going to use multiple if else. This is entirely up to you how much tab space you want to give, how much indentation you want to make so that your program is clearly clear. Okay. Let's conclude the lecture by looking at a short assignment that we have prepared for you.